Gender theory is a modern development and is contrary to the Christian faith. The term sex relates to two categories, male and female. The majority of living beings are categorized according to these biological differences in their reproductive organs and secondary characteristics. In the 1950s the term gender was introduced. This refers more to the social roles of men and women rather than their biological differences. The fundamental role of the gender theory is that this social role has only a remote connection to their biological sex. And in the past, gender would have taken for granted that there were different social roles for men and women. But with today's hyper-individualism, this is considered out of kilter with modern thinking, modern flawed thinking, I would say. The individual is urged not to accept a role imposed by society. Now the role chosen by the individual is called gender identity. The individual could choose their gender identity irrespective of their biological sex. They could choose to be heterosexual, homosexual, transsexual, transgender or neutral. A transgender person is someone whose gender identity does not match his or her biological sex. The individual feels himself to be a woman, although biologically a man and vice versa. A transsexual person, on the other hand, is someone who has actually undergone a sex change operation to change from one sex to the other. Even the World Health Organization supports these sex change operations and even regards them as a human right. This right, according to them, is called gender equity. Education programs seek to instill in children, even at the primary school level, a need to consider and choose their gender while they are young. Even the onset of puberty can be halted by administering a hormonal drug for those children who think they may be transgender. They overlook the fact that early teens can often be confused about their identity, including their gender. The blocking of puberty is only aggravating the situation, which would have disappeared naturally anyway. When transgender people physically change their sex through an operation, they often experience psychological problems and want to revert back to their original sex. Now, where does gender theory come from? Well, it has its roots in the radical feminism of the 1960s and 70s. One of those feminists was Simone de Beauvoir, she said that no one is born a woman, but one becomes one. Under the influence of these ideas, radicalised feminism is convinced that the role of the married woman as an instrument of procreation and education of offspring is merely a social role imposed on them by society. She must be liberated from this through contraception and artificial reproduction. The radical feminist Firestone said that once liberated from the tyranny of their reproductive biology, women would be able to choose their role irrespective of their biological sex. Now this kind of thinking is also an attack on the family. She believed that all forms of sexuality should be permitted and indulged in, a kind of recreation. De Beauvoir's theory coincided with the introduction of large-scale hormonal, hormonal contraception in the 1960s, which made possible so-called liberation of women from their reproductive biology, thereby paving the way for the total detachment of gender from one's biological identity. 
Of course, around this time also, the controversial encyclical Humana Vitae was promulgated by Pope St. John Paul VI. This regarded the use of artificial contraception as intrinsically evil. The fact that public opinion, generally speaking, accepts the detachment of gender from one's biological sex is the consequence of the almost wholesale rejection of the teaching of Humanae Vitae, which fuels the sexual revolution of the 1960s and 70s. They say, it all begins in the mind, and this is where the above flawed theory of gender arises from. The body takes second place to the mind. The body, including the reproductive and sexual organs, is not something which is secondary or, mere, or a mere accessory, but part of the human being as a person. St. John Paul II said, a theory which treats the human body as raw datum robs it of any meaning and moral values. The human body is not raw datum. Men and women's bodies are designed differently because their roles are complementary in the same one and the same human nature. Neither man alone or woman alone is capable of procreation. Complementarity is not limited, however, to sexual differences, but psychologically men and women complement each other. From the beginning, according to the book of Genesis, God made them male and female, and it is in the union of the male and female that humans uniquely reflect the image of God. It's not good for man to be alone, the book of Genesis teaches us. The essential aspects of masculine and feminine, of husband and wife, father and mother, are therefore all created in the image of God and form part of the order of creation. Simon Bouvier, mentioned earlier, the radical feminist, considered women to be treated with contempt as objects of carnal pleasures or as mothers destined for reproduction in roles imposed on them by society. St. John Paul II, on the other hand, sees contempt of women as a consequence of original sin, which we all suffer from and also mentioned in the book of Genesis where it said the man will lord it over the woman as a result of that sin. Original sin has obscured the reality of the man and the woman being made in the image and likeness of God. This image of God is obscured by advocates of the gender theory. The detachment of gender from biological sex radically contradicts the Church's teaching that sexual relationships can only take place between a man and a woman within marriage and must always be open to procreation. The gender theory advocates free choice of gender irrespective of biological sex and also accept sexual activity in whichever way one wishes outside of marriage within, without openness to procreation. It promotes so-called marriage between persons of the same biological sex and considers it morally acceptable for such persons to adopt children. It accepts extramarital sexual relationships, <coughs> surrogate motherhood, and artificial reproduction. The gender theory, which has its origin in radicalized feminism, promotes the lawfulness of abortion. It employs the euphemistic term reproductive rights to suggest that women <coughs> facing unwanted pregnancies do not need to assume the role of a mother viewed as a role imposed on women. Gender theory undermines the whole of the Christian faith 
by undermining the roles of father, mother, husband and wife. It undermines marriage and parenthood, <coughs> holy scripture, <coughs> tradition and the magisterium of the church. <coughs> Since the Catholic priest is married to his spouse, the church, people supporting <coughs> the gender theory would regard it as immaterial whether the priest was male or female. <coughs> Exposing the errors of the gendered theory is most urgent. What is at stake as a consequence of this theory is not only sexual morality, but the proclamation of the <coughs> Christian faith itself. Now, thank you all very much for listening, and God bless you all. Oh